Hey everybody, welcome to another Tuesday evening service. This is week eight of our Joy uh, for the Journey series, and we're talking about happiness. And today's topic is called the highest happiness. We're going to talk about the highest form of happiness that you can achieve. But before we go to that, I'm sure you can see that I have an incredible co-host with me, somebody that you're not accustomed to seeing. Uh, this is my fiance. Of my future wife, and she is here today uh, to help us to discuss this. But we also have another announcement uh, that we want to let you know that I think that all of you all who tune in should be very, very excited about. So let's tell them what's coming. Um, our other podcast, mm -hmm. which is called The Grow Zone, and um, that is just with Pastor Keon and I, and it's more just Keon and I for that podcast, right? Because yeah. we don't, it's not it's not scripture based it's just about life like relationships and we dig deep and share a lot yeah um finances like um, it's raw like it's, it's it's real it's very raw and very real and i think that i enjoy or i'm excited about people getting to see keon yeah you know what i mean they get pastor keon here which is awesome and amazing, but they'll get key on at the Grow Zone. Yeah, and so over there we're talking about topics. Um, I think um, we're, what, 20 episodes a season, so yeah. season one will be released uh, in the first quarter of 2022, so get ready for it. It's called the Grow Zone. Um, you can go right now actually to uh, Instagram because the – page is already up we yeah. don't have any content on it yet but we already have the handle out there so that way you can be following and make sure you subscribe uh, and set your alerts so that when it hits you will know that the grow zone is in full effect now you know I'm I'm excited that people will get a chance to see the other side of me but I brought you here today because I want people to see the other side of you mm. because you know, you grew up in church. You know, you always say that I saved you. I didn't save you. You were saved when I met you. Otherwise, I wouldn't have wanted to talk to you because like you needed to be saved. I mean, you had to have the you Holy Ghost. You told me I needed to be saved every day. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Your salvation does need to be renewed. But in the meantime, <laughs> um, people don't know, like, you were, what, the pastor secretary at the church? I was. Um, I grew up in church. I mean, I sang in all the choirs. My mother was the church pianist so we were there when the doors opened and closed mm. um several times a week and yeah i was the youth day um chairman three four times in a row wow <laughs> um, was that was that a voted position you were nominated yeah how did you get that nomination that many times because i just was good at it wow. i don't know okay. i don't know i was pretty good at youth day chairman mm -hmm. but i also yeah i became he was uncle earl the our pastor then because i grew up there yeah. so i became a secretary for a, a year or two and then i decided that was not for me um but you know folks think so. i'm not even <laughs> gonna ask why you just said that's not for me because the look on your face I'm going to leave it's it there. Hard. It's it is hard. hard. It is hard. Church it's hard. is hard. It you is know? hard. So, um, yeah, that was not for me, especially at like 19. You know, it's a lot of pressure. You got the deacons and the deaconess that got things they need you to do that don't have, you know, nothing to do with your actual job. They yeah. want you to pull aside. They offering envelope because they <laughs> forgot to put some, like that kind of stuff. So, um, <laughs> I, yeah, I did that. But I've always gone to, gone to church. I'm, I'm was currently before I moved to Houston a member of Faithful Central Baptist Church. What well, is not Baptist anymore? Sorry, that's when how I grew up. Faithful Central with Bishop Almer. Let me tell you how I know that's true. So one day, me and Tyrese was talking on the phone, mm -hmm. and he said, "He said, uh, man, you know, congratulations on your fiance and all of that." He said, "Let me tell you, she has been because he speaks in a different language. He yeah. speaks in it." He said, um, "Your future wife." has been inviting this energy in her life um, ever since I've known her. He said, because I went to Faithful Central, mm -hmm. and he said, I very rarely went because of shooting movies and out of town. He said, but every time I went, she was there. Mm. He's yeah. like, and he told me, he's saying she was with her friend, Alicia, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just, I'm just excited about being able to sit here with you um, and enlighten the people about uh, what God laid on, a, on our heart. Uh, which is this highest form of happiness. And you'll see 
uh, that you can actually achieve a higher form of happiness. Now, let me let me tell you something. I don't I don't even want to to front as if this message is going to make sure that you're never dissatisfied again. I, I don't even mm-hmm. I don't even want you to have that as an expectation. The truth is, in this life, you will have trouble. And in this life, you will have trials. And in this life, you will have tribulation. So as I teach this message, I want you to know the first thing I did as I put pen to paper, or in this case, fingers to keyboard, Mm -hmm. the first question I have in my notes is, what's your goal in life? And I asked Shawnee and I asked one of our uh, media producers here um, in the church who was setting up the camera, Ricky, I said, what's your goal in life? And what did you say when I asked you that? I said to leave a legacy for my kids. To leave a legacy for her kids. And I said to myself, but is is there something else? Like, what's your goal? I pushed and I pushed and I pushed. And I tried to get her to tell me a goal that benefited her. Mm. But she never got to a goal that benefited her. Every goal she gave was the children would be the benefactor. I didn't pay attention to that when mm-hmm. you were doing it, but yes. That's what I was actually trying to do. I was trying <laughs> yeah. to get you to say, uh, well, by the time I'm 50, I want da-da-da. Or by yeah. the time I, you know, I was trying to get that because then I asked Ricky. Mm-hmm. And Ricky said basically to be fulfilled mm-hmm. in what he did. Now, Ricky is just barely 30 years old. Right. I mean, he's at a, he's at a whole different stage of life. And I was trying to create a dichotomy to show for those of you all who are watching, that your answer to this next question is going to be based on where you currently are in life. Hmm. And I don't want you to feel uh, anxious or, or at a dis-ease or uneasy about what your answer is because if you are 20-something, your answer is going to be different from people who are 40-something. Yeah. Like we're in our 40s, and it ain't, it's, it's not going to be the same. Right. And, and I was trying to create a lesson because my goal is to make sure that whenever we speak, that we reach the broadest amount of people mm-hmm. possible and not to have a narrowly focused message that only a certain group of people can get. Right. So if I ask you, what's happiness? What's your response to that? Like, mm. how do you define happiness? I think peace is happiness. Yeah. Um, I learned that. I, I wouldn't, I don't know. Again, it's like you said, your answer at certain stages in life is different because I don't think I would have said that a few years ago. Um, But I I probably in my 20s would have been like traveling and, you know, having Mm a good time and, you know, that type of thing would have been goals or or happiness. But I think now it's peace Um, and being comfortable with yourself and knowing yourself and knowing what makes you happy because there's so many components to making yourself happy, right? But I find that peace is... For me right. right now, the ultimate happiness. I'm going to pull up my notes that you did not help me put together. Let me see. What's the first word next to what's your goal in life? <laughs> what is that? Right here? Yeah. Travel. See, because I when I was creating it, I was thinking about from where I started, yeah. what I thought was important. Yeah. Mimi says... At 20 years old, her goal in life, she just wants to travel, travel the world. Yeah, that's true. Just wants to travel the world. She yeah. just wants to go. Yeah. But then, the older you get, you just want to get somewhere and sit down. Not right. that you don't want to travel. Right. I would like to travel and sit down. And sit down when I get there, right? <laughs> right, right, and, right. When, and so, um, or maybe for somebody else, a goal is to start a family. Right. For somebody else, uh, a goal is to own the business. Right. You said, I think it's important. Um, that the goal is to leave a legacy. Yeah. Right? Uh, when I hear that, and I want to know your thoughts on that, when I hear that, when I contemplate that, I am my mind is, is programmed to not just hear what you said, but to see if there's something behind that that you didn't say. When mm-hmm. I hear Ricky say enlightenment, when I hear Shawnee say um, legacy. When I hear Amira say travel, when I hear my own mm-hmm. answer to the question, mm-hmm. here's what I boil it down to. And comment in the comment section uh, on Facebook and YouTube if this is accurate. Really, it boils down to you either want to be happy or fulfilled. Mm. Like happiness can't be fulfillment. 
we can make them synonymous terms. Yeah. Our, so what I should say, look at the notes, happiness and fulfillment, mm -hmm. right? The conjunction, mm -hmm. not the decipher. So mm -hmm. fulfillment. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because I think that is what that gives me. Le knowing that I'm leaving a legacy, which legacy and, and being an example, right? A good example um, for my kids is fulfilling for me. And that is happiness for me. So that, to me, is the same. Yeah, I get it. Because it, it is fulfillment. It is happiness. It's why... A person will climb a 16,000 foot mountain mm -hmm. in the freezing cold mm -hmm. for fulfillment. Right. You, you remember we were watching that marathon and, and what do they call it? Marathon legs mm -hmm. when, the, when the people's legs start mm -hmm. feeling at the Why would anybody run for five hours? <laughs> right. That's their fulfillment. Fulfillment. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, right. so I think that everybody is trying to, to build an apparatus, a life, a system uh, where where you where you feel fulfilled. Otherwise, why would you go back to school in your fifties and raise a family and cook and clean, right? And have books under your arms. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I got a sister right now <laughs> who's in school. Yeah, and has a full time job, and has two children, mm -hmm. and two dogs. Mm-hmm. She does. Why would you go back? There's something about fulfillment. Yeah. There's there's why would why would we say, Will you marry me? And you say I do. Why why would we do that? Because right. you know relationship comes with its ups and downs. Mm -hmm. It comes with its hard times. Uh it comes with the sicknesses of parents, uh, the death of loved ones, financial crises, and I'm talking about everybody in general, not just us. Mm -hmm. Um uh, you can get sick, car accidents. Why right. would you do it? Fulfillment. Yeah. Fulfillment. Yeah. Um, Rick Hansen has an approach called neurodharma. I want you to Google it. I want you to write it down. Neurodharma. Dharma is spelled D-H-A-R-M-A. Neurodharma. And he says, and, and let's dig into this. He says, a part of being neurologically happy includes balance like your life has to have balance it can't be mm. all travel right because i know uh people who travel <laughs> a lot but it hasn't solved the anxiety issue very true i know people we know people who have all the money in the world mm -hmm. but it doesn't stop the insecurity mm -mm. right that's true do things solve problems no absolutely not what would you what would you say um would you say they cause problems they can. They can. They can. Absolutely. Things. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I always say to you, like, you can, you can have all the cars, the purses, the shoes, all of that, and it is not happiness. Yeah. It's a, it's a filler. It's like I remember. I if, sometimes when I used to get upset or things were out of control, I would shop because mm -hmm. I thought. You know what? Let me just go spin up a bunch of money. That'll make me feel better. I mean, for what? Like five minutes? Yeah. And then what? You know. So it's a it's a temporary fulfillment. I've done that. Happen. I would go and buy something and love it in a mall and feel good about myself, and then get home and try it on and not even like it. Right. Right. Because it's not it is, fulfilling. It is not fulfilling. Yeah. So here is the difference. Most people are not neurologically happy. Most people are circumstantially happy. Mm. Most people are just happy in the moment yeah. because of the circumstance. And the most dangerous form of happiness is circumstantial happiness. Wow. By the time we finish today, I want you to be neurologically happy so that even when the circumstances stink, mm -hmm. you can still be happy. That's the premise of this. Because if you're only happy because you have money in the bank, and 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 you have your children and they're happy and they're whole and um, your relationship is in order. You got the car you want. You mm -hmm. got the house you want. It's <clears throat> furnished the way you want it. You got the right outfit on. You got the right shoes on. Then at every moment when those shoes get old, no happiness. When the clothes become too tight, no happiness. When the children brings home a bad report card, no happiness. When you and the spouse get in an argument, no happiness. I want to move you. We want to move you yeah. from from circumstantial happiness to neurological happiness 
So that way you can be happy in whatever state you're in. So here are, uh, you, I know you're going to ask me this. I know you're going to DM it or you're going to put in the comments. People say this to me all the time, babe. How? Right. I, don't tell me what. Right. Pastor Keon, Absolutely. how? And answers. I get it. Answers. Answers. And we, we have. Answers. I have to go into the comment section and sometimes type a, type a small soliloquy, a, <laughs> a paragraph. Yeah. Because sometimes you get me in sound bites on, on the internet and you may not hear it. Today, you're getting ready to get it all. So make sure you tag, text, tweet, share this message with somebody because we're about to give you practical points on how to have the highest form of happiness and moving you from circumstantially being happy to being happy neurologically. First point, you have to have an awakening. You have to have an awakening. Uh, Proverbs 6 and 22 says, and I'm reading it in the Message Bible. It says, um, good friends, follow your father's good advice. Don't wander off from your mother's teaching. Wrap yourself in them from head to foot. Wear them like a scarf around your neck. Listen to this. And whenever you walk, they'll guide you. Whenever you rest, they'll guard you. Whenever you wake, they'll tell you what's next. And when I see people struggling to have an awakening, it's because they don't do a few things. The first thing they don't do is they don't remember what they're taught. Second thing they don't do is they don't keep walking when it gets tough. Mm. The next thing they don't do is that they don't rest when it's hard. And the last thing they don't do is they don't wake up. Wow. Sleep through it, lay through it, ignore through it, and you'll never be happy because in order to get an awakening, you have to walk, you have to listen, uh, you, you have to rest, you can't be happy if you don't sleep. Right. You can't be happy if you don't sleep. You you have to move through it. So in, in your own experience, I want you to, and this is just like straight transparency. You're not even ready for the questions I'm asking. Mm -hmm. I want you to remember a moment where you suffered the most. Mm -hmm. I want you to take yourself to that moment you suffered the most. What were you doing? <laughs> where were you? And and I'm have I prompted you on this? No. She is She is as off guard as you are right now. Where were you when you were suffering? Tell me where you were, not the address, but the room. Express it to us right now. Where were you? I was in my master bedroom in the bed. And I remember asking my mother, um, isn't there something I could take so that I could sleep the longest amount of hours? Like, wow. I just did not. I wanted to wake up. I, I wanted to be there for my children but i wanted to sleep, sleep through the crisis sleep oh through the moment oh my god i wanted to just like cook because my mind wouldn't stop and i just wanted my mind to stop thinking stop worrying stop being sad stop all those things and i just thought there's got to be something somebody can give me to just sleep at least give me six hours, give me eight, you know, I just, the longest amount of time. And um, yeah, right. but I, I I literally spent weeks in a bed. I would get up, see my kids off to school, um, shower, get back in bed until they got home from school and try to put on the happy face until it was time to go to bed and same cycle every day for weeks. And see, no rest. No. No walking. No. Just send them off, smile for them. They yeah. go right back to the depression, the anxiety. I don't want to label it for you, but right. whatever it no, was. No, that's exactly what it was. And okay. I don't think I knew it was that when I was in it, but it definitely was um, severe depression. And see, and this is not a criticism of what she shared because when you met me, I was in the bed. Mm -hmm. Um Six months later, still frustrated. Mm -hmm. Six months later, still angry. Um, and you were here on cloud nine. Life was good for you. Yeah. I had just come out of the most difficult situation in my life at up to that point in time. Somebody introduces us. Mm -hmm. And here I am. I'm putting on the smile because I'm saying to myself, yeah, I'm ready. Right. I'm, I'm getting back on the horse. But the truth is, is if I can tell you the truth, um, 
when I met you, I wasn't whole. Right. And it wasn't until we were able to talk about it later that I was able to accept the fact that right. you actually knew it. Yeah. And a part of the reason why I love you unconditionally is because of the circumstance you met me in. Mm -hmm. You never once treated me any different. You never once made me feel bad about wanting to take my time or, or this pace that I put on you, mm -hmm. even though your life was wide open and, and you could have made a decision in a day. Right. Here I am talking about what happened to me 180 days ago and what happened to me six months ago and what happened yeah. to me and, and, and being frustrated. I was circumstantially depressed. Right. Which prevented me from being neurologically free. Mm -hmm. Because my mind was in a different place. I was not able to have an awakening. Um, Sean, sometimes I go to the gym. I've been trying to get my baby to go to the gym with me, by the way. Uh, for a year and a half, and she's only accompanied me once. But I'm not going to say that out loud for anybody to hear. Well, I, I didn't say it. You definitely said oh. it. Oh. Um, sometimes Ricky and I will work out. Well, good for you and Ricky. I mean, your attitude is really unacceptable at this moment. Aaron works out too, by the good way. Good for Aaron. <laughs> so... Um, so happy you, for you guys. You're throwing me you off. go to the gym. You're throwing me Woo. off. I have to do the word of God. You're healthy, guys. Okay. So when I exercise, um, oh God, you, you go always to the gym with you Ricky always and hate and when exercise. I give an exercise example. I just don't understand why it always has to be an example using exercise. It's like a, it's like you are, it's a little jab. And jab. then you reference that I don't go to the gym. That was a jab, but I <laughs> I just want you to come. But anyway. Okay, I'll so, come and, sh and root you guys on is what no, I'll do. That's not going to happen. Oh, now, see, I could put that in the sermon because that's good. Because Here we go. All right, I'm not going to do go it. Ahead. No, no, I'm no, not going to do it. Do so it, do um, it. when I exercise, let me hurry up. When I exercise, <laughs> we do something called a superset. Never heard and, of it. <laughs> and the superset is when the trainer gives us Four, three, four, five exercises in a row. So we have to go to station one, two, three, four, and five. And then, am I right, Aaron? Aaron's in the room shaking his head. And then we have to do that. We have to go in that circle. That's so we'll awful. do that five or six times. Yeah, that's awful. Well, when I am tired, and anybody who exercises and is honest, it is not intentional. You sometimes skip one of them. And the trainer, am I right, Aaron? He's off camera shaking his head. Am I right, Ricky? Did sometimes. You say, I'm sorry. Did you say you sometimes forget? You literally oh. forget. Like, okay. it'll be chin up, push up, sit up, ab roller, and you'll go to the next exercise, and you will By literally, accident. I'm telling you, because when you are fatigued, you skip steps. Ah. The first yeah. round, I do them all. Second round, I do them. By that third round, Rodney has to say, hey, and I swear to you, it may look like I'm trying to skip it. I have yeah. literally forgot. That's what I would do. See, I would intentionally be skipping them. Yeah, but. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I'm not going to I get it. If and, you're and not that's looking, true. I'm going to skip. Well, let, well, let's make a lesson out of it because let's apply <laughs> it to real life. Because yeah. isn't, I mean, comically, yes, but empirically, what you're saying is actually the truth. That when you are tired, you are intentionally going to skip steps. Yeah. If I'm tired yeah. of you, I'm not saying I'm sorry. Right. If I'm tired of the circumstances, I'm not coming. If I'm tired of losing money, I'm not loaning you any. Because fatigue alters your decisions. Absolutely. A thousand percent. Right? A thousand percent. So what I'm saying is um, that in life... Mm -hmm. When you are neurologically fatigued, you have a tendency to skip steps and you can blame the circumstance when you really have to pay attention to the fatigue. Yeah, that's good. Like that's good. when you're tired, when you are tired, um, you laugh a lot. Mm -hmm. Do I? Yeah, you laugh a lot. Oh. And I, and I know you're tired, like, babe, we'll, we'll be, I remember we was at IPIC one time. And we was watching a movie, mm -hmm. and and you were asleep, and I said, I said, baby, you said. <laughs> First of all, I pick is the best nap you can get. I I think that <laughs> no sleeping in the movies is the most expensive nap you can get. I refuse to pay fifty dollars to go Pretty lay good. down, sitting up. 
in Listen, a chair. You get that eye pick blanket <laughs> and it's dark. I don't. Yeah. Sorry, y'all. Yeah. Bible study. Let's go back. All right. Let's go back to Bible study. So I think that fatigue contributes to skipping steps. Um, here is what I think that everybody should be thinking right now. Write these words down and uh, we're almost done. I want you to practice these next things. Are you ready? This is how you're going to stay happy. I want you to practice steadiness. Just just be steady. Try not to be an inflector. Just steady. Um, and sometimes your steadiness is going to be misread. Hmm. Um, you just stay here. It's it's and, and I'm I get in trouble for it all the time. It's a matter of fact. It's steady. Um, it can be misread as something else, but it for extremely emotional people like us. Sometimes steadiness is your friend until you can learn how to perfect the steadiness at another level. That's another conversation. Um, lovingness, steadiness, lovingness, fullness, steadiness, lovingness, fullness, wholeness. People say this to me all the time. Oh, man, since you met Shawnee, you're so much more whole and you're so much more happy. She's not the reason I'm happy. She's not the reason I'm happy. I had to do some work. She contributes to it. But yeah. I am neurologically happy, not circumstantially happy. Right? So she's contributed to that. But it's still my work to do. It's still my work to do. Here's another one. So you got to practice steadiness, lovingness, fullness, wholeness. Here's another one. You got to practice nowness. You got to get out of the future. You got to get out of the past. And you, you have to focus on now. So you got steadiness, lovingness, fullness, wholeness, nowness, allness. All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And lastly, timelessness. I'm going to unpack those as we go forward. But here's how to achieve true happiness. Three more things I'm going to have you write down. Number one, let it be. Number two, let it go. Number three, let it in. We could talk about this all day. Because most of us struggle with, and I, I hate to keep using the same words, but unhappiness or yeah. anxiety or mm -hmm. depression or frustration. Absolutely. Because most people don't just know how to let things be. It is what it is. A dog is going to bark. I remember one time um, uh, Amira came over. She brought her dog, whose name is Murphy <laughs> Simon Alexander O'Neill. Don't ask. And he came over and he went into the office and he peed on the rug. And I looked at Murphy like, I'm about to drag you out of this house by your tail. Mm -hmm. No offense to the dog lovers. I didn't do it. <laughs> this woman smiled. <laughs> said, dogs pee. I don't. They've, she's and he's a puppy. She's had dogs her whole life. I did not. So I don't know how to just let them be. Right. I just know how to let them not come in. Okay. So <laughs> let it be. But very quickly. You have to move to letting it go right. because it already happened. Right. Nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. It has yeah. already happened. Let mm -hmm. it go. But here is where most people struggle. Even when the positive affirmation arrives or the apology comes, they don't know how to let it in. Mm. And when you don't know how to let it in, you're still subject to the anxiety that came with the thing that you tried to let go or that you try to let be yep. because you won't let the positive energy in. So if I go right now um, and, and, and I've got um, a million dollars in my hand mm -hmm. and I'm, I just let it be and, and, and I let it go and I give it away and I have a job tomorrow mm -hmm. and somebody else tries to replace the million dollars with the million dollars so that I can do the same, de same deal, but I say I don't want it. Me not letting it in prevents me from being able to reciprocate and reproduce the act. Right. 
because I won't let the apology in. I won't let the resource in. I won't let I won't let the positive energy in. Like, what would you say? And there are women listening right now. They're saying, but Pastor, how you do that? What would you say to a woman who struggles, and, and I'll speak to men, who struggle with that let it in part? How have you uh, become better at letting it in even when you don't feel like it? Mm, I think it's being cognizant that you're not letting it in. And it's a, a habit and a you know, I would have to say a habit. Like you I think sometimes you can be so angry or so frustrated or so fatigued with something that the sorry is like you just don't want to hear it. You don't want to receive it um out of anger or what frustration whatever it is. But I think you have to be aware of that about yourself. Mm to be able to fix it. I think that about everything though. Yeah. You know, like if you're not cognizant of what that flaw is or what that thing is that you hold on to, I always tell even my kids like it's so much easier to smile at somebody or to just be nice than it is to have that negative energy even if that person's not reciprocating right it's so much easier to walk by somebody and smile and keep it pushing than yeah. anything else. And I think that about everything. So if you're aware it's more being aware, you know, yeah, like I think that should be on the list. Awareness. Awareness. Just yeah. like I know that I have a problem with this. I know I'm tired of this. But if I'm receiving an apology, a sincere apology, mm -hmm. then I have to be aware, like I need to let that in for me, mm. you know, so that I can let whatever that is go. Because it, it's only burden it's only gonna burden you at this point. You know True. what I mean? Which I believe is so toxic when you just hold on to stuff and it's, it's toxic it's toxic in so many ways in your relationship, your friendships, your your health, your everything. So. I agree with you. It's like it's like having a house and walking up the sidewalk or coming in the driveway. If all of y'all who live in houses going to know exactly what I mean. Summertime comes, the weeds grow, and you drive in your garage every day past the weeds. You see them, they aggravate you. You look at them, I, I need to pick them. Or I should get somebody, to, but you just drive right past them. Your mind is like a garden. You can continue to walk past those weeds or you can pick them. And the longer you let them stay, whenever you pick a weed up that you didn't take care of quick, so if you take care of it quick, I promise it'll slide right out. But if you let it stay, the roots grab dirt, and when you pull it up, the dirt mm -hmm. comes with it. And every time you let a weed stay in your mind, you pull so much of your mental cognitive level out because you allowed that thing to stay in so long. So you have to let go, you have to move on, let it be, and then let God in, <clears throat> which is what I'm calling mindful. You have to be mindful. So mm -hmm. first you have to have an awakening. The next thing you have to have is mindfulness. Scientists have proven that there is a link between what we feel and how we think. This is gonna be good. Proverbs <laughs> 23 and seven says what? As a man thinks, so is he. The scientist goes on to say that uh, whatever smells good to you and whatever tastes good to you, the reason why it varies from person to person, the blue cheese tastes like blue cheese. But the reason why it's good to somebody else and nasty to someone else is because of how you think. Is it? Not think about because it. it's just nasty. No, because I like blue cheese. It's disgusting. See? It's, and it's, it's because I think it's disgusting? Mm -hmm. Really? Think about it. Think about it. Uh, you like beets. I do. Disgusting. <laughs> like my, That's because you think they're disgusting? Correct. But you taste it and you don't like it. That's correct. But my brain controls my taste bud. Oh. So since my brain has controlled my taste bud, and, and it, it could be a myriad of varying factors. But he says hmm. that the brain, the brain is what makes things smell, taste, feel different to so other people. He okay. says people always, uh, uh, in the book he says, people always ask me how they can control their thoughts. He says through mindfulness and through being conscious, he says the brain is shaped by how you think. Hmm. The brain is shaped by how you think. Um, some of you all watching us right now, you want the room to be 75 degrees when you go to sleep. Somebody else, you want the room to be 68 degrees when you go to sleep. Some of you, 
um, feel comfortable sleeping on the first floor. Some of you like, I can't get a house with a, a bedroom on the first floor. I got to have it on the second floor. Sleeping on the second floor doesn't make you any safer. Theoretically, if someone wants to get in your house, they can get to the second floor too. But because you think you're safer up there, then you are. You can argue with the scientists, but you can't argue with this scripture. As a man thinks, mm -hmm. so is he or she. So we are actually our thoughts. We're actually our thoughts. I want to hear what you have to say. I just need to go back to this first floor, second floor thing. No, we're we're not we're not we're not contractors. I don't we're think we're that teaching is, the word of God. That that might not be true. Okay, tell me what's what's untrue about because it. Because technically if a burglar comes and I'm on the first floor, he can get to me a lot quicker than he could if I was on the second floor and by then I probably would have heard him. Okay. So I have more time to do what I need to do. Okay. Well, let's think of it this way. What if a burglar breaks into your house mm -hmm. and he breaks in on the other side of the house? Okay. And your room is here. Mm -hmm. You're telling me that you can't account for the distance from the other side of the house to the bedroom? Or if he broke in by the steps, he can get up the steps in the same amount of time to a room that's close to the steps as he could. If you're far away from, if he breaks in far away from the bedroom. Or maybe I need to pull the burglars out there because I'm thinking that well, if maybe, he breaks in on the first floor, he's going to 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 circle that first floor mm -hmm. to see what he can get. Now you're thinking for the burglar. I'm definitely thinking for the burglar. That's how you got to think. You got to think like the burglar. Yeah, but you're not a burglar, so you can't think like That's that. That's why I need to pull the burglars. But I think they're that they They're not watching. Would, We're talking to Christians. There's definitely some burglars watching your Bible study. Wow. For sure. I'll There's be here burglars. by myself next week. Uh, so that way we can uh, teach the word of God and not discuss burglars. <laughs> but um, he says in the word of God, don't be. Here's the real. Here's the real thing, sister. Sorry. While you think about this. Okay. Here's the real deal. Philippians four and six through seven. While you think about the burglars and me saying that you you are what you think. Mm -hmm. Be anxious about nothing. So the person who is anxious is going to do all of that what you just did. Right. Right. <laughs> but be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasseth all burglary. I mean, understanding <laughs> will guard your heart when you're on the first floor sleeping. I know it doesn't say that, but what I'm really trying to get at is that anything you think about, you can create a circumstance as to why that is either safe or dangerous. That's very it is, true. It is definitely a contribution of the mental state than it is about what is actually happening. Mm -hmm. um, I, my sister, Danielle, deathly afraid mm -hmm. of sleeping on the first floor of anything. She's smart. She, <laughs> she's smart. Mm -hmm. So she's deathly afraid. Me, on the other hand, it never crosses my mind. I have no anxiety about sleeping on the floor, so or on the first floor. So let's poll it. Everybody online, if you are afraid to sleep on the first floor, type yes. If you're not, type no. Aaron, I want you to look at all those responses, and I want you to type me how many yeses and how many no's we have. Afraid is, is harsh. Afraid. I, I think I, I if it's more dangerous, about. how about that? Is it more dangerous to be on the first floor than it is the second? Like, how the second floor gives a burglar a little more? Depends on where he breaks in. Okay. Let's ask the people. Poll the people. Okay. We'll poll the people, and I'll never get the results. All right. <laughs> the second thing you have to understand is that you have to meditate. You have to Oof. meditate. Your brain takes the shape um, based on what you pay attention to. That's, that's really what happens. Your brain takes its shape based on what you pay attention to. So Psalms 1 and 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and he should meditate on it day and night, and he is like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. And by the time you get to verse 12, it says that we should meditate on the word 
both day and night. Now, I think that one of the ways that you can actually uh, break free from stress, here's another one, learning to meditate. Learning to meditate. Um, there is an old adage about how sheep uh, chew grass. They, they have like, some say like six compartments in their stomach. They chew the grass, it goes down, they spit it up later on, they chew it again, they, they swallow it again, and it, this process of, of, of chewing it over and over and over and over and over again uh, is really what the writer meant when he said that we should meditate on the word. Here's what I want to know. What is your definition of meditation? Mm, this is a trick question. No, nope, not it? a trick question. Not My trick definition question. is complete silence and breathing to a point where you're able to turn off the thinking and the sound. And I think you're supposed to kind of focus on your heartbeat. Mm -hmm. I haven't graduated to that part yet, but I can, I think I, I, I need to practice meditating more, but when I have, it's, it's just becoming one in that moment in the complete silence and turning your brain off and all of the noise and That's the distraction. absolutely the truth. Okay. That's absolutely the truth. Ding, ding. Um, one additive is meditation is actually <clears throat> thinking about the brain and not thinking about the thing. Hmm. So some okay. people say, I'm meditating, I'm meditating. But what they're really doing is they're nursing, cursing, and rehearsing the problem. Right. right. So they're overthinking right. about the issue. That's not meditation. Meditation is concentration. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, how many of you all remember uh, back in the day, and I don't know if they still have this. You remember when um, Welch's used to make the concentrate and it came in the, uh, the cardboard yes. circle? I think they still have They still that. make that? Mm -hmm, and you mm -hmm. put it in the water and mm -hmm. you stir it? Yep. And, and the concentrate breaks down, right? Yes, it does. Try to eat or drink that concentrate mm -hmm. without the water. Mm -mm. What would happen? It's, it's syrup. It's disgusting. Right, because... And it doesn't even taste the same. It doesn't taste the same because right. it is very difficult yeah. to deal with a concentrated substance. Mm. Very difficult to deal with a concentrated substance. Mm -hmm. If you don't concentrate, the devil will continue to consume you hmm. because you have watered your mind down to the place where he can handle it. Wow. A concentrated mind is very difficult to defeat. Hmm. It is very hard to make a person who <clears throat> concentrates happy. But here's why it's hard for us to concentrate. We have so many things watering us down. We got our phones. True. Social media. Uh, we've got our children, mm -hmm. relationship, mm -hmm. health problems. All of that stuff hijacks our attention. Yeah. And that's the way the enemy gets in our mind to keep us from being concentrated. Hmm. I remember you telling the kids, um, you know, they got all this basketball stuff on and you can tell them, like, you always tell them about what focus, mm -hmm. you know, one thing at a time. What would you say to a parent? Because they, I, I can't get my child to focus right now, Miss Shawnee. I can't. They, yeah. they won't. What do you do to keep yours focused? I think I just keep preaching that same uh, message of mm -hmm. focusing. You know, you can only... I think growing up, I used to tell my kids, you got... This is the job. Do, do good in school. Mm -hmm. Obey your parents. Right. Um, you know, those are really their jobs, Don't right? Don't be a burglar. Don't be a burglar. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do... Don't sleep okay. on the first floor. There you go. Gotcha. Knock out the first floor first. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think focus... I think you just have to be repetitive, mm -hmm. you know, especially with their children. You just have to be repetitive and understanding. I Because I have five, I think that... And this is completely off the subject. No, no, no. But I think that... Um, you, you have to develop a different relationship with your children and mm. know your children individually. It's mm. not, it's kind of like school, you know, like they teach us all the same. We shouldn't all be, in my opinion, shouldn't be all taught the same. We yeah. don't all receive information the same. I think that's the same with kids and parenting. Like if you have multiple kids, they don't think the same. They're not the same person. So what works me being able to tell Mimi, focus, is different from me telling Shakir to focus because yeah. he 
he just struggles with that. Right. So I have to come with it, come to him in a different language, in a different way, with the same message. Yeah. Shakir, how old is he? Uh, 19. 19. Um, number one, he's a boy, right? And yeah. And then, you know, you got, you got girls and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I really think that if you really, if you really narrow it down, um, and, and I promise you guys, this is longer than we expected, but we really feel like we're healing and, and helping people right now. Yeah. Um, Shakir is actually focused on the thing that he wants to focus on, which gives the idea that he is not focused at all. Right. 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 Like he's he, so focused. He's so on, focused on what he wants. Yeah. <clears throat> that it gives the idea that he is not focused. Not focused. You're right. On. You're right. That's exactly what it is. Because when I talk to him, I, he knows exactly what he wants. Yeah. But it's it's like he wants to skip from now to exactly what he wants which and is, all the stuff in between which is not mindfulness right which is not mindfulness he's right. not he's not being mindful he's not right. he's not concentrating right 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 which is which is what we're talking about um the other thing that we want to let you know that you're going to have to do in order to be happy and this is not going to be popular you're going to have to suffer mm -hmm. you're going to have to suffer you're going to have to suffer right now in this room we're in right now um, the air condition has to be off because it blows so loud that you would hear it on the microphone. So, you know. You're suffering. I'm suffering. You are. For the gospel. You are. I am suffering. I'm watching it. But you have to suffer. And mm -hmm. 1 Peter chapter 3, and uh, verse 14 says, but even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. That's so, you will be blessed. I am. You are. Because you're blessing the people. You are. I'm I'm. You think I'm being funny, but I'm serious. No, you're absolutely being funny. I'm but so not. Definitely... I'm just, but it was funny that I'm watching you suffer. I mean, it's not funny wow. that I'm watching you suffer, but okay. it's funny that we physically, you use that example, and yeah. we physically can see that happening. Are you suffering? I'm not. Not not how you're suffering. It's okay. We're going to turn the air back on soon. Get you some water. You want some water? I do not. Okay. Um... You know, I think I'm gonna do the next Bible study without you. I know. I figured as much. Because this you, was your idea. You want to do the podcast at Bible study? I do. That's my can't. problem. We can't. I'm it's sorry. Two I'm sorry, things. everybody. You have to teach the people. Okay. I feel like I'm kind of contributing. I didn't want to be the person to sit here and just be like, mm hmm, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. That is true. Right. That is so true. So I'm trying. But you, you're also talking about burglars and things. I think I'd be, I'm be. i bringing a realistic view to Bible study tonight. Okay, well, go ahead and finish. I'll, I'll let you teach. No. Let's read no, this one right here. My, so 1 Peter 3 and 14 says, but what? But even if you should. Go ahead. You do this part. No, I just, I, I chime in. You no, go. You go ahead. They won't right take here. me serious. They will. I do. You do not. I don't. Go you ahead. are hilarious. <laughs> All right. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. There is a blessing in suffering. There's a blessing in suffering. Mm -hmm. Jesus suffered on the cross. Mm -hmm. There's a blessing in suffering. The benefits of suffering is that, here it is, it teaches you how to heal yourself. That's good. So let's go back to that moment. Mm -hmm. You land in that bed. Mm -hmm. And what did you say? You said, you asked your mom. Um, well, there's something somebody could prescribe me to sleep. Like? Very deeply and long. long. Time. Yeah. And well, I, by the way, what did she say when you said that? She fussed. I was grown too, and she fussed. She was like, "Why would you say something like that? That's horrible." So what do you? She fussed. What do you think she heard when you said that? Like I wanted to, like check out. You yes. know, I was checking out, That's and what she, she heard. and and yeah, that was not an option. And I get it. You know what I mean? It's it's not an option. I don't. I wanted to live. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I just wanted to check out for some hours, quite a few, if I could. Understood. Yeah. What would you hear if uh, Miara said, Mom, give me something mm, to sleep? Yeah, I'll, I'll be devastated. Because yeah. you're, you have to, and what I'm making is a point, the brain is shaped by what it thinks. So when you were asking, mm -hmm. you thought it was a great ask mm -hmm. because of what you were thinking at the time. Right. Your mom hears it and she hears deplorable. Mm hmm. 
because of what her brain is doing at the time. Yours is flight or fight. Right. Hers is my baby in trouble. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, again, how we think about a thing. And I I was just absolutely playing. I know it's safer to sleep on the second floor and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, But the premise is, is the way a person thinks. I get it will contribute to what they fear yeah. or what they argue about mm-hmm. or what they lose sleep over. And I believe that the people who are watching us, all seriousness aside, we play all the time, we joke, but this is almost like the altar call. Right. That you may look at us play around and you may say, man, I wish I had somebody that I could mm-hmm. joke around with like that and play around with like that, like goals. And I'm grateful that we have it. But look at how many years in our life we didn't have it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And how you told me when we met, hey, Keon, I play a lot. I'm sarcastic. I like to joke. Mm -hmm. And I come from a place, if I come from a place where that isn't normal, first thing you told me is you have to experience me in person. Mm -hmm. We start dating on the phone. You say you got to experience me in person because I don't want you to misread me. Right. So that was all about thought. Yeah. I, I want I want to help to contribute to shaping your thoughts because I want to tell you when I'm joking, when I'm not, and I don't want you to come up with that on your own. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And how I think about it has shaped um, how I experience you. Right. What What would you say? Uh, how would you apply that in the reverse? What was it about me that you didn't learn until you actually knew me? Mm, I definitely thought you were... Um a little rigid Hmm. and that that wasn't going to be good for me Hmm. you know what I mean like just a little stuffy like church you saying or like serious or very serious Mm -hmm. like you gave me very very serious all the time and um I'm not so Mm -hmm. that's why I was like "Mm, I don't know about this one because I literally I just like to have fun I like to have to have a good time I don't take a lot serious and I had to tell you You've judged me by watching me on the Internet. Right. And you've judged me by watching me do a serious job. Right. And that's why I think you said you can't wait for people to see the podcast to see to to see the other side. I think I think we all have a duality in us. Mm -hmm. Like um, I bring the person who is um, who's advantageous for the task. Right. Right. Um, Because uh, but I think that you contribute to the depth of me like I know the breadth of me Mm -hmm. I know all of the things that I can do but how deeply I can do those things uh, have become more pronounced by seeing myself through your eyes Hmm. which has helped me to achieve my highest form of happiness and now I have more positive experiences Mm -hmm. I have enriched emotions I have uh, the ability to absorb positivity and I am able to link my negative and positive experiences together. If you're listening to me, I just said I have a positive experience, enriched emotions, absorb positivity and link the positive with the negative. I just spelled heal. Hmm. You have to have positive experiences, enrich your emotions Absorb positivity and link the positive with the negative. Babe, I have a battery in my hand. Mm-hmm. And we took this battery out of one of the remote controls. And right now, the remote control is not going to work. All right. Because I have a battery that is supposed to be inside of it in my hand. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know if you can see it. But at the top of this battery, there is a plus. At the bottom of this battery, there is a minus because this battery has both a positive side and a negative side. And it is both the positive and the negative that actually generates the power. You will never have power in your life until you have to link what you love with what you hate and generate some power out of it that can change the rest of your life. You need both the wheat 
and the tares so you can appreciate the wheat. The Bible says in Psalms 139 that we should accept ourselves fully. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You've got to learn to let go of the pain. I'll say this last sentence, and she and I are going to pray for you as you leave. There is something called an eddy, E-D-D-Y. An eddy is a temporary ripple in the water. If you've ever seen somebody throw a rock in the water and the water, but eventually it steals. It's called an eddy. What is an eddy? It is a temporary wave in a body of water. There are no eddies in the ocean because it moves all the time. But in a still body of water, a temporary wave is called an eddy. Why am I saying eddy? Eddy is when you recognize, listen to me, that everything is impermanent. The most difficult moment of your life that you're enduring right now, the one that you feel will never end, the one that is taking all of your happiness away and keeping you depressed is an eddy. This too shall pass. The argument that you and your husband just had, it's an eddy. It will pass. Um, when you look up in the sky, some days the sky is blue. Sometimes it has clouds, but you know what? Those clouds are eddies. Because one day you'll wake up and there will be no clouds in your sky. If you allow the enemy to make you think that everything you're experiencing is permanent, you will never have peace. Everything, and I mean everything, is impermanent. It will end. So you might as well rejoice in the fact that it is already done. That God is going to perfect that which concerns you. Sooner or later, it's going to turn around in your favor. That's it for this study. I want you to be safe. I want you to be happy. And I want you to be at ease. Here's to your highest form of happiness. Let's pray with him, babe. God, we thank you today for what their ears have heard and what their eyes have seen. And we pray that this will catapult somebody into their highest form of happiness. Let no weapon formed against them prosper. And let every lying tongue that comes up against them be condemned. Let someone say, what must I do to inherit eternal life? In Jesus' name we pray. Name. Amen. Listen, Amen. before we leave today, we're going to give you an opportunity to give. And you know what? We're going to be the first to sow. This message is so important to me, and I'm going to do something on a Tuesday that I never do. The most important thing for me over the last three years has been happiness. I made a decision I was going to be happy, I was going to be optimistic, and I wasn't going to let anything or anyone allow me to be pessimistic again. Why? Because I spent so many years doing it. Mm -hmm. I am going to let go, let be, and let in. I'm not going to be perfect. I'm not going to always do it. I remember the day my life changed, and many of you heard me say this. I remember it, babe. I remember it. I gave Bishop Jakes $111. Mm -hmm. And what I thought was a tidal wave was an eddy. I didn't know that when I released that $111, I wasn't always going to be poor. Right. I didn't know that I wasn't going to always be unhappy. I didn't know that I wasn't always going to be insecure. I didn't know that I wasn't always not going to know what was next for me. Because mm -hmm. to me, it seemed like a permanent mm -hmm. situation. But I released that $111. And from that moment forward, and it wasn't a dramatic, it was just an easing over time. Right. That releasing that seed changed the rest of my life. For those of you all who are ready to give right now, they're going to put all of the instructions up on the screen. 
Now, you already have a gift and, and you're ready. You've got an amount that you can afford and you're ready. And we're going to receive that now so that you can be blessed. But for everybody listening to me who wants to turn tsunamis into eddies, mm. who wants to turn permanent structures into impermanent movements, who want to move from circumstantially happy to neurologically happy. I want you to plant a seed of $111, not to me, into your own life, into your own children's life, into your own experience, so that you can have the life that you actually deserve and have it more abundantly. What you see with us today, she can tell you she's not a faker. This is us authentically. Yeah. This is how we are every day. We have our ups, our downs, our ins, our outs. But we're neurologically satisfied, not circumstantially satisfied. And it's going to take you some time to get there. But I'm asking God to allow this seed to be the fast forward to your miracle. Release it right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I was joke. I'm actually going to have you back. This was amazing. You liked it, did oh, it good? You did great. Come on, let's, I mean, did she do good? Let me see your hands. And you were incredible. You Thank have you. charisma. Um, I love your clarity. I love your comedy. Um, just amazing. Thank you so much. Amazing. And you're pretty. I got my eyelashes done yesterday. All right. Okay, we're going to end right here. Just can't, uh, can't seem to keep it together. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Hey, what's up, family? Listen, I enjoyed the word today. I know you did as well. Hey, if you want to take part in what we're doing here, we have some numbers gonna come across the screen. If you wanna give to us, hit the number on the screen. If you wanna join, be a part of what we're doing here, hit the number on the screen. And remember, share, send this message to someone, someone needs to hear it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just wanna say thank you just for the word that was given. We pray that someone's heart was touched and someone's mind was changed. We love you, God. All these blessings we ask in your son, Jesus' name, amen. Hey, remember, we love you here at the Lighthouse Church. Nothing you can do about it. See you soon. What's going on is PK here. And listen, I want to tell you that I get so many DMs, so many messages of people saying, Pastor, how can I connect with you? I love your messages, but going through YouTube is kind of difficult. Where can I come to a centralized place? We heard you. And that's why we created Lighthouse 2.0. Lighthouse 2.0 is our tribe. It's our village. It's the place where all of the people who say, I want PK to be my online pastor. And PK says, I want you to be my online member. This is the place where we go, the watering hole, the ecosystem where we all come to grow together. And it is exclusively for you. They're getting ready to put a link up on the screen right now that shows you how you make that exclusive step. And everybody can't get in. So you better take first movers advantage and get in while you can fit in. I can't wait to see you.